everybody over there. Now everybody over here. <laughs> creature on earth, man was meant to have dominion over all the other animals. What's dominion? I don't know. I think it's in Virginia. <laughs> Man's first relationship with animals is a simple one. The man would bash the animal over the head with a club. <laughs> and then eat it. Ow! Eat the animal, you idiot! What do you think that is? A club sandwich? <laughs> Later on, man wanted to make friends with some of the animals. We call these pets. At first, this was a tricky proposition. Look at my new pet wolf. Ah, that's nothing. Check out my brontosaurus. Hey! He sure is big. And don't let that scare you. He's a plant eater. Oh! <laughs> of course, the relationship between man and animals evolved to the point until we get into the actual sketches. And it seems that people always choose the pets that are just like they are. Yeah, I got a pit bull. What of it? Oh, boy, Dad. It's an Irish setter. Do you have a parrot? Do I have a parrot? Yes, a parrot. A parrot. A pretty parrot. <laughs> have any of you guys seen my turtle? Stop making fun of my fish. Yes, it's a poodle. Why do you ask? Our fondness for pets virtually ensures that sooner or later, dads around the world will be besieged by the question, Dad, Dad can, can we, we have, have a puppy? puppy? A puppy? No way. Why not? Because puppies grow up to be dogs, and dogs are a big responsibility. You know, Dad, we could resolve this maturely, coming to a fair and reasonable compromise and keeping peace in our living room. Good. Or, or we could... Throw a tantrum! after she spun around in circles and successfully threw up on the couch. Jill, what kind of tantrum do you have in mind? I plan to start with a the pass, then whining in a very irritating little voice, and if that doesn't work, I'll shave my head and join a cult. You call that a tantrum? You would know a tantrum would beat you on the... As you know, Bill, Jill's hard to talk. What are you gonna do? Hold my breath till I turn blue. You can't do that. I was gonna hold my breath. Copycat. I can hold my breath all day. I can hold my breath all week. I can hold my breath all year. Jill, Bill, hold that breath. Dad, how do you size up these two competitors? Well, Jill's got a lot of determination and heart. And take a look at this. Notice the puffy cheeks and the bulging veins in the forehead, indicating an acute lack of oxygen to the brain. Probably no permanent damage, but you can never really tell. So then it's working. You gotta give in. What? They can hold their breath till their heads explode. What do I care? <laughs> Okay, so the tantrum didn't work. I guess I'll just have to go back to the repetitive whining. We want a puppy! We want a puppy! Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute, listen. You kids are missing a point. You want a puppy. Why? Because a puppy would be cute and lovable and adorable and fun to play with. And he'd sleep next to you with his big floppy ears and his puppy breath in your face. Way to go, hon. You're really making a case against it. Well, I haven't come to the butt yet. But you have to take care of a puppy and they're a lot of trouble. We Stay don't mind. mind. That's because you don't know. For one thing, you gotta feed them. Man, that is a big dog. Yeah, man. Buster here is up to 173 pounds. What do you feed him? Chill 
children usually. Do you have a hefty ham? Well, you need a food formulated for your overweight animal. Fat dang dog. Fat dang dog is made from pure beef grease and 30 times the starch of ordinary kibble. Wow, but there could be the fattest dang dog in the block. <laughs> it could be the block. That is beef too. Fat dang dog doesn't shy away from all those unhealthy byproducts like other pet food. If the lardy suckers are hungry enough, they'll eat a chicken foot, no problem. Wow, his feet have been completely engulfed by rolls of blubber. <laughs> Gavin! Fat dang dog! Bye back today, so you can hear everyone say, That was fat dang dog. Okay, Dad. We don't mind feeding him. Hey, he said he's gonna be a ham. How come we can't have a girl dog? That gets into another responsibility we'll talk about later. Oh, fine, and the boy dog doesn't? Woman, you are treading on sacred ground. Ooh, touchy, touchy. I'm sorry. It's just that there's certain things that are essential to having a dog. Like water. Hello, I'm Felix Bigwind Fellow, champion breeder of Pekingese Bull Shiku. And this is Champ. He's 16 years old. That's dead to you and me. Breeding a champion takes the finest care, and that's why all my blue ribbon canine drink Aqua Toilette. Bottled toilet water from the finest toilets of the French Alps. Aqua Toilette is recommended by four out of five veterinarians and five out of six professional plumbers. <laughs> And now for a word on behalf of the cheesy pets kids get when they're not allowed to have dogs. Woo! Hi, I'm Michael Jackson. And all those rumors about me becoming a white woman are crazy. They're absurd. Each day, hundreds of innocent sea monkeys are born down the drain. When kids discover they don't look like the sea monkeys in the comic book. Don't throw these poor creatures away. It's crazy. It's absurd. Bring them to the society to protect abused sea monkeys or fathom. At fathom, we'll make sure they get the plastic surgery they need to look like the comic book sea monkeys. Also, look for me and other eccentric celebrities at... Ant Farm Aid! Return in a moment, King Nickelodeon. And now back to Roundhouse.
surprise for you. Ooh, what? I know you really wanted a dog, so I got you one. Oh, I did. Say hello to our new pal, Gus. What'd you expect on this show? A real dog? Ah, uh, hiya, boys and girls. I'm delighted to be here. Hey, Gus. Hey, fella. Hey. hey. What is this? How dumb do you think we are? Well, I don't think we have time to get into that right now. Dad, that's not a real dog. It looks like some kind of sucky sock dog. That's right. It's a new breed, sucky sock. They've just been approved by the American Kennel Association. But you can't even make it talk without moving your mouth. What do I look like, Nancy Reagan? <laughs> look, I'm just trying to teach you kids something about the responsibility of having a pet. Dogs shed. They leave little puppy presents all over the carpet. You gotta take them for walks. Now you're laying it on a little heavy there, don't you think, Pop? You stay out of this. You're supposed to be helping me. Okay, but be fair. Dogs can be a lot of fun, too. I'm having an argument with a sucky sock dog. No, you're not. Yes, I am. Shut up. Make me. I just got a new dog, and he's not taking to me. Help me, Elizabeth Tailwagger. Maybe it's your sense. My sense? It can take weeks for a new dog to get used to your smell. But there's one smell no dog can resist. The unmistakable aroma of another dog's rear end. That's why I'm so proud to present my new cologne. But, of course... Ew, yuck! Hey, hey, get him off me! Get him off me! Only from Elizabeth Tailwagger can come the passion of a pooch's posterior. <laughs> Trust me, I married a construction worker. <laughs> Welcome to the pet channel. All pets, all the time. Tonight on Doggy Houser MD. Woo! Uh, down, Doctor. Down. Tonight on Fresh Fish of Bel Air. Man, this fish is fresh. Where'd you get it? Bel Air. Tonight on LA Paw. All right. Okay, sit. Sit. Tonight on Empty Nest. <laughs> Fully health broken. Mm. When are they gonna get home? Tonight on Monday Night Furball. <laughs> Tonight on In Heat in the Night. <laughs> Tonight on Fleece Company. Tonight on Evening Spade. Not tonight, honey. Tonight, my MBLE plays dead on Possum, right after In Living Collar and the Golden Retriever Girls. Then, it's a world premiere starring Ellen Barkin, Sybil Shepard, and Spaniel Day-Lewis in Sniffing Howard's End. Ooh. We now return you to more tasteful programming. I'm bored. Me too. I wish someone would come along and tell us sappy stories and sing tickeningly sweet songs to us. Hey, hey! No sooner wish than done, kids. Get ready for Barney! Barney! Yeah! Let me tell you where that little sucker's at. He's a pretty 
Stay tuned. Roundhouse will return in a moment. Watching Nickelodeon. And now back to Roundhouse. <laughs> happens every day in big cities and small towns innocent dogs are being abused and tortured by people who fake the throw go get him boy it's right there right over there in front of you go get it right there witness the mental torment inflicted on the tiny brains of these helpless animals this cocker spaniel's owner not only faked the throw but faked the there's a cat in the tree as well now she doesn't know what to believe <laughs> This French poodle's owner faked the throw so many times, it put a strain on his eyesight. This is Rollo, and you don't want to know. Call today. Help stop the madness, because a throw is a terrible thing to fake. Are you a large dog looking for love? You've tried the dog parks in the local pound, but are always meeting runts. Never a pick of the litter. Well, now there's Great Dane Expectations, the video doggy dating service. Hi, I'm Butch, and uh, if you enjoy walks in the park or walks along the beach or walks of just about any kind, please call me. We show your videotape the cuddly canines and leave the rest to Mother Nature. Great Dane Expectations, for when you're ready to commit to more than just your master's leg. You know, for a sucky sock dog, gushing's real at times. He probably functions on a very high astrophysical plane in the realms of cosmic oneness, like the Dalai Lama or the weird Al Yankovic. I bet he could do my math homework all in his head. I wonder what he's really thinking. Eat, sleep, lick, toilet, scratch. <laughs> Oh, he's so cute. I wish Dad was awake to see that. Oh, I know, but he looks so peaceful. Yeah. I wonder what Dad's dreaming about. Eat, sleep, lick, toilet. Later, Mom. I'm going to Dave's. You're not going anywhere with that dirty face, Mr. Rudy Patootie. Ew, at least he's real soap. This is embarrassing. This is better. It's Mom's spit. The cleanser made from the juice of real Mom. It's not just any Mom's spit, is it? Oh, no. Now, this is all my own spit. I've been pulling it up just for you. Now, do you have a boo-boo on your elbow, bud? Mom's spit has healing power? That's right. And Mom's spit comes in saliva flavors depending on what your mom's been eating. <laughs> Warning, some boo-boos may require medical attention unless they become ouchies. Consult a physician before using this or any other spit product. Ever notice how weird it smells in other people's houses? Hey, dude, you got a commercial spokesman in your house? Ew, it smells like somebody burned crab cakes in here and rubbed them on their sweaty feet. Well, now you can enjoy those odd odors in the comfort of your own home with Stank House, the fussy new fragrance from Fetid Homes and Garbage. Smells like foreign neighbors who cook cabbage all the time. Well, then try our newest gentle mossy funk. Who floated the air biscuit? Dude, that's my house. Ugh. Also comes in disturbing new odors like beef, diapers, and grandfather. With Stank House, when you smell a nasty, rasty odor, it ain't just your upper lip. Oh, dude, you got a lot of cool stuff in here. Hey, what's this? I think it's my fish bowl. Ooh, how long has that fish been dead? I don't know, about a year. What's that do with it? Hey, kids, it's time to play Watch It or Bury It! The hilarious new game show where your decision to flush or bury your deceased fish could win you tens of dollars in cash and prizes. Here to tell us about our returning champion and his challenger is the lovely Holly Tamale! Yeah. Champion Oscar, the dead goldfish, yeah. the son of the ten times.
times you indicated your map for a fish's size. Our challenger, Calvin, the dead guppy, lived in unshaded tap water and was fed marbles and corn syrup. Thank you, Holly. Okay, kid, I'll give you tens of dollars, and you can take Calvin outside and place him under a patch of soil somewhere, or you can try and beat our champion through the drain pipes for the grand prize. What's it going to be, flush him or bury him? Flush him! Uh, flush him. He's going all the way. Ready, set, flush, and they're off. Calvin makes a great start around the TVC turn, but Oscar is holding strong with a quick move through the copper tubing. It's going to be close to Gil and Gil around the home stretch, and... Oh, too bad. Calvin's just too bloated to clear the drain pipe. I'm sorry you should have buried him. <laughs> but we do have some lovely parting gifts, Ollie. You've won the home version of Flush It or Bury It with a complete set of Jack like pets. Hey, Dad, I think I figured out what you meant about pets being a big responsibility and all. You know, if you don't take care of them, something really terrible could happen. Well, it's a little late to figure that out, son. Have you seen Gus? Oh, gosh. I left him outside when I was playing with him and I forgot to bring him in. You left him in the driveway. Oh, I'm sorry, Gus. No problem. See the point I was trying to make, son? You couldn't even take care of a sock dog. I see what you mean, Dad. Oh, I guess this is where they dim the lights, and I go to center stage, and I sing a ballad about how I let my friend down. Hell no, it's just a sucky sock dog. Get over it. <laughs> well, hey, Gus, how you feeling? Reprise the theme song and roll the credits. Whenever my luck gets me so down, I know I can go down, 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 down. down.